Film Revision is back to continue our year-long discussion of films from 1983. This is our 22nd of 25 discussions. Over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not we would replace today's little remembered, only available on VHS film with the more popular Risky Business, which is from 1983, but was not on our original list of films to discuss. While in spite of pressure from the producers, I stuck to my guns, and in an effort to keep the list of 25 films as eclectic as possible, opted to stick with uh, this small Scottish comedy drama, Reuben Reuben, starring Tom Conti. And to help me determine whether or not I made the right decision, we have with us one of our stars from Mirror Arts' upcoming web serial Intersection, actor Aaron Kronikin from San Diego, California, and Mike Richards, an IP specialist from Catawissa, Pennsylvania. Mike, you're up first. I had this uh, kind of bizarre experience of watching the film and kind of enjoying it and having nothing but negative things to say about it by the time it was over. <laughs> I, I can relate to that. And not just because of the ending, I would say. <laughs> uh, that's a big thing I want to talk about. Erin. Yikes. Um, wow. Uh, I was counting the minutes for Kelly McGillis to come in so that something could uh, would start happening. And I'm very surprised it was nominated for some for some very major awards. The buzz around the film centered around Tom Conti, and, and for what it's worth, it's a showy role. Yeah. Um, as far as his performance is concerned, golly, I, I don't know if it's great. My take on it was that I think it's, it's only Tom Conti's performance that really holds the film together. Like I think, the, I think the tone of the thing and the story are so uh, disjointed. But um, you talk about his performance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would argue that it's his character. The moment when they, they gave him a little bit of of angst and like he's in the I think a train bathroom and he falls yeah. apart. Yeah. You buy that. Yeah. So I mean like yeah. I'm not sure Tom Conti is, is creating this three dimensional character. I just think he's got a hell of a lot of zingers. He's witty, he's sharp, mm -hmm. women adore him. His behavior is frequently horrible. Mm. There's a lot mm. of bad things. So regardless of you know his performance, you know, like likability as a character, like are you rooting for him? That's, and that was my biggest problem with it because up until he meets Kelly McGillis, I could not find a reason to care. I personally loved Kelly McGillis' performance. Was great. I thought she was really, really and, good. Uh, you know, because generally, uh, you know, my history with Kelly McGillis is that she is not great. There's always talk about Tom Conti and whatever. What about the filmmaking of this movie? About 20 to 25 minutes into the film, I thought, I'm bored. I'm going to study the filmmaking now. I think I stopped doing that after about five minutes. <laughs> That's my <laughs> answer to that question. They weren't doing much anything at all. Right. Here's a prime example, the tape recorder. Hmm. I mean, it's based on a play. The tape recorder is a very, very, to me, cheap way to execute monologues and soliloquies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's particularly the, the, the last one. You gotta adapt that, you gotta change that, you gotta mm -hmm. do something with that. Speaking to a tape recorder, that, to me, that's lazy. It didn't bother me viscerally. I mean, certainly, uh, Ooh, sitting here afterwards, I, like I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in terms of filmmaking devices and thinking about it, I would agree that the tape recorder, it's one notch above a voiceover. Um, yeah. It's a very cheap I, I, Maybe not, I mean, it depends. The only two moments of the, well, the cinematography, I guess, that, that struck me were uh, the, the kind of angle from below the dresser up when he's standing on the chair at the end in the, in the I guess, penultimate scene. That was a good angle. The I'll only interesting camera angle in the whole film, and then they had these occasional weird, like, it's probably right. pushes on people. At the party, McGlann says, says some zinger and then kind of walks off, and then there's kind of like a hmm <laughs> moment that the wife has. <laughs> And there's like this slow push, like just so you get that it's. Um, really yeah, I, you know, I, I, that's interesting. I don't remember the camera moving at all, and mm -hmm. I had a note about that, but, but I'm glad you caught I think that. Once in the whole film. <laughs> <laughs> the blocking was overly theatrical, and mm -hmm. like the camera was very patient with its actors, sort of let them move in and out the frame without moving the camera too much, right. and it was almost like a proscenium staging. Yeah. And, and, and that's, I think that's what leads to your boredom, quite yes. frankly. Yes, yes. In terms of editing, they did a lot of sound bridges, which is a very, very cinematic thing, mm -hmm. and that was probably the more, most artful it really got. Yeah. Uh, and they were, they were most part effective. I remember one, the first time he sleeps with his sister-in-law, they start kissing, and the church music comes in right before mm -hmm. the, the church mm -hmm. scene. There's a lot of that, connecting things thematically, or, or not like the church versus the sex, and how Gowan is out of place there. But there wasn't enough of that, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a great one after the bar fight where the, uh, the, the big meathead, I think as the fate is happening, says, I'm bleeding blood. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm bleeding blood. Yeah, yeah that, um, that was good. There was another one of those funny lines um, at the very close of the first scene when he says, um, can someone give me a ride? And a woman goes, oh, I have a Mercedes. And she runs out and that's on the fade into the, into the second scene. Now it's time. We have, we, oh time to talk about it. Time for the dog. Time for the dog. <laughs> 
the whole reason for the title of the film. Oh, God. I'm warning you now. This is a spoiler. We, <laughs> if we're going to talk about this film, we need to talk about the twist ending. Best part of the movie. Because then it was over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw it coming. Did you really like, see it coming? I totally saw it coming. I, I, I never would have imagined it. Really? I never would have imagined well, it. It's possible to cross my mind as a joke. As oh, a, like, no. It would never actually <laughs> truly well, occur. I knew, uh -huh. I knew that it was going to happen and that it wasn't. That he was going to be like, no, I'm not going to do this. And it was going to happen. I did How not know. How did you know, know that? Oh. Did you know that? Could you have guessed that? But no. It, it, well, it's just no. one of those things when someone's going, I'm not sure, it's I'm not sure intuition. if I'm going to do it or if I'm not going to do it. You know that it's going to happen. I feel like when I see something like that, I'm going to kill myself, I'm not going to kill myself. Yeah. But generally going to wind up, I'm not going to kill myself. Yeah. All right, but, but what did you think about it? What oh, did it make, how did it make I, you feel? I was like, no! When I saw the dog come in, I thought it was great. I thought it was for, for a, uh, what I thought Are you being was serious? Somewhat, yeah, for what a ridiculous movie it was. It was a very satisfying moment because it comes out of nowhere. I mean, that's what I don't like about it. It seems like it seems like that that's ending exactly. that somebody yeah. in an intro level writing class is like, now yes. I'm going to make the twist ending and the right. dog comes no, in I mean, and I'm kills the guy. No, I'm not saying that like, it was that's not good at all. It was oh, not, oh, okay. not good at all. You just said you loved it. I loved it because I hated it. Because it was a perfect <laughs> ending. <laughs> because fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's got to be something that's going to make me laugh. I, uh, it me laugh. <laughs> I mean, to me, it, it continues kind of the tone problem of the movie, where it's it's mostly a sort of a lighthearted, goofy comedy, but then well, the I mean, like, that's, a, that's a 180. Entirely likable, right. I, I mean, I, I would argue that the tone, for me, is pretty consistent. Consistently boring, but consistent <laughs> for, for most of the movie, until that, that just out of nowhere conclusion. I'm wondering why. What does that tell me about uh, Gowan or the story, like what am I supposed to take from that? And I, and I think your 101 writing class was, was right on. I think it's cheap. All right, so um, it's time for closing thoughts. I'm gonna go six five. I don't know if we're allowed half points, but uh... everyone, it's funny. Everyone does six and a half. Like it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. If they pick a half, it's six All and a half. All movies yeah, are just too. this side of average. Uh, <laughs> like I said, entertaining to watch certainly at points. Uh, 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 a lot of good zingers, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of just good line writing, but uh, ultimately not terribly satisfying. It didn't add up to anything. A good point. Uh, I'm gonna give it a four, a four, because it's a little bit less than average. Uh, but <laughs> is that what a four is? It is worth, <laughs> it is worth seeing for um, Kelly McGillis because I think that and it's not Oscar-nominated Tom Conti. No. I'm gonna give the film a five, like so right in between you. I was interested for a long time, and it was ultimately disappointing. But you know, the ride was mostly good. I mean, like I feel really just sort of mediocre about it. Um, you know, there's some good points, great lines, but narratively. Um, Narratively, didn't go very far. All right, it's time to close things out. Um, thanks once again to Aaron and Mike for coming out today to talk about Ruben Ruben. I am proud to announce that on December 6, 2008, Real 13 will bring you one of my all-time top 10 favorite films and also the 1977 Best Picture Oscar winner. And that is, of course, Annie Hall, directed by Woody Allen. After Annie Hall will be the Real 13 short that you always choose on real13.org. Then, Matthew McConaughey, Alan Arkin, John Turturro, and Amy Irving headlined the intersecting ensemble anthology drama 13 Conversations About One Thing on Real 13 Indies. The whole evening starts as usual at 9 p.m. on December the 6th, 2008, only on Channel 13 WNET in New York. And if you are in New York, then you've got a rare opportunity coming to you. Um, Myriad Arts' only feature film, Homecoming. We'll have a one night only screening on February 11th, 2009 at 8.30 p.m. at Anthology Film Archives as a part of their Wednesday night New Filmmakers series. Homecoming stars Josh Hamilton as Barry, a successful video game designer whose life gets turned upside down when he runs into his former high school crush as played by Maureen Flanagan. The film co-stars Joseph Cross from Running With Scissors and Randall Duke Kim from The Matrix Reloaded. Save the date and email us at info at myriadarts.net for more information on the screening. Film Revision in the meantime will return in just about a week or so, in which we're gonna talk about the highest grossing film of 1983, Return of the Jedi. Um, until next time.